Hello guys and welcome to another video. Uh, today we are going to um, learn how to set up email encryption in Windows. Uh, for this we need uh, three things. We need uh, GPG for Win, which is the encryption uh, program. Uh, we also need an email client. In this case I'm going to use uh, Thunderbird. And finally we need a, an extension that is available through Thunderbird um, which is Enigmail. Uh, so once you install this extension um, the extension it actually acts as a as an interface between the encryption software and uh, email client. So the first thing we're going to do we are going to go ahead and download the um, GPG for Win. Once that's done um, I'm going to go ahead and install uh, the application. I'm going to browse to the downloads directory and I'm going to double click JPG for Win. I'm going to click Yes. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to click Next. Next. I'm going to leave everything as default. Click Next. I'm going to accept the um, the default installation path. Click Next. I want to put a shortcut on the desktop, so I'm going to check this uh, checkbox right here. I'm going to click Next, and finally, I'm going to click Install. And I'm going to pause for a second. Okay, once installation is complete, click Next, click Finish and you can read if you want through this readme file but I'm going to go ahead and close it um, the client um, interface available uh, to GPG for Win it's called Cleopatra if you open it up basically it is a private uh, is a key management software uh, which you can use to manage all the uh, keys and certificates that you import into your um, into your uh, GPG for Win, but I'm going to close it for now. The reason that you see when you first open it up, you shouldn't uh, see any uh, keys available if it is the first time you install it. But I had already installed it and play around with it, so that's why um, there is a key uh, displaying there. Um, but as but as you um, import keys and remove keys you should be able to see all your keys um, in this uh, interface so I'm going to go ahead and close it and next I'm going to install uh, Enigmail um, the way you install Enigmail is by clicking on this icon these three horizontal lines and then going to add-ons from there just type Enigmail in the search box and uh, it should be one of the first uh, search results so just click install wait for it to finish to install and then um, restart Thunderbird just click restart now Hopefully it will restart soon enough. Okay, here we go. I don't need this tab anymore, so I'm going to close it. The first time you open uh, um, Thunderbird after you install Enigmail, you should have a wizard um, asking you to set up your, um, your private and public key. Uh, but because I've already done it, I don't see the wizard uh, starting up automatically. But if you don't see the wizard, you can always come to uh, this horizontal lines icon and go into Enigmail and click Setup Wizard. And that'll start the the Setup Wizard in order to uh, in order to uh, get you started setting your uh, public key, your private and public key. So I'm going to leave it as default. Uh, standard configuration and I'm going to click next 
like I said before, there is already a key there, but if it is the first time you install, uh, you want to go ahead and continue with next. I'm sorry, that was a mistake. Um, you want to, you're not going to see this, so you want to create a new key pair. So I'm going to select this one and I'm going to click next. And then you should come up to this dialog box. Um, in this dialog box, um, it will let you know that you are about to create a, a, a pair of two keys, um, a public key and a private key. And this is the way asymmetric encryption works. Asymmetric encryption, um, there are two types of encryption. There is symmetric encryption and asymmetric encryption. Symmetric encryption uses one key to encrypt and decrypt data. And asymmetric encryption uses a key pair what is known as the public key and the private key. Uh, the private key is for you to keep and the public key is for you to distribute to uh, trusted entities, I mean people you trust. And that key is, is used for those, uh, for those people to encrypt messages and send to you. And then you use your private key uh, to decrypt the message. And so let's go ahead and I'm going to enter my passphrase. Um, it's advisable that you use a long passphrase. And I'm going to click next. And at this point, um, the application is generating the key and uh, so but one of the things that tells you is that during this time that the software is generating the key it is advisable that you use uh, this intensive uh, application meaning that use um, application that write and read from the disk and uh, also to move the mouse in other words to uh, in other words to work with the computer and the reason is because it uses a, a mouth, mouse movement and to generate uh, entropy uh, or, the, or the randomization used to generate the key. So the more you move the mouse at that point, uh, the more complex is the randomization used to generate the key, the harder it is to break the encryption. Uh, so it's something along those lines. Um, next. Um, you have to, it's, it's advisable that you um, create a revocation certificate. A revocation certificate, it is a certificate that you would use to revoke your key, uh, to render uh, useless in, order, in, in, in the case that your key pair becomes, uh, your private key becomes compromised, uh, you want to uh, completely revoke the key, that's when you use your uh, revocation certificate. Uh, in case it becomes lost, that will be another case. So I'm going to click on create revocation certificate. And I'm going to enter my passphrase. I'm going to press enter. And then I'm going to save it. It is advisable that you save it to a secure and uh, save it and uh, don't lose it. Move it into a secure place because this is the certificate that is going to revoke your um, your key. So I'm going to click save, click OK, and then I'm going to click next, and finally I'm going to click finish. The final step is to write an email. And um, by the way, if I go back into Cleopatra, now you should see two um, two certificates, two uh, key pairs. And I'm going to write an email to myself, and I'm going to say. hello world and then I'm going to click on this um, button right here 
and if you notice you have two options actually you have four options but uh, the main op the main two options are these two right here and one is encrypt messages you, you can have this one is set by default and the other one is to sign the message I'm going to select both and the difference uh, you know well encrypt message is you know self-explanatory it will it, uh, you will use the uh, the uh, the encryption key to encrypt the message and then um, signing the message you will use your um, your key to sign the message and that way the um, the intended uh, recipient can verify the integrity of the message in other words it can uh, you know it's it, it's used to make sure that whoever's whoever sent the message is uh, whoever says he is so that's basically it I'm going to click OK and then I'm going to click send and I have a new message right here and uh, when I try to open when I click on it it's asking me for my passphrase so at this point I'm going to enter my passphrase click enter and I was able to unencrypt the uh, to decrypt the message if you click on this uh, green uh, section right here this is the signature the email signature um, as you see there is a key ID and that is a signature um, so that's it that's it for this tutorial I hope this tutorial was helpful um, and thanks for watching